Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. It's been a while since I picked up the camera, at least a good week or so, so I wanted to do a quick video on some updates in the garden and some exciting things I'm working on. So I've not picked up the camera because I've been working on another project that I'm not quite ready to reveal yet. It's something I've been wanting to do for probably 10 plus years and I just never got around to it and so I'm starting on that and I'll reveal it in a few months. But I wanted to show you how the seeds are doing first. So the violas that I started a couple weeks ago are doing really good. And so we have a lot of good germination there. I need to come through and add some more water to these bins by Gardener Supply because it's all dried out. Um, the petunias that I started on both sides here, I've got some germination in this one right here. Uh, these I need to get water in stat and I'm going to do that right after this video because it dried out. Um, a little more than I wanted it to. And here I have some caladium corms that I had last year that just sat and dried out in the garage. I'm trying to see if I can bring those back to life. I don't know if I'll have any luck, but that's a little experiment since I left them sitting out there a little too long. The geraniums are looking pretty good. I need to water these too. I haven't been down here the past two days, and so I let some watering get away from me. And the peppers themselves are actually looking really great and so I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove this cover here uh, look at this golden honey I don't know how well you can see it uh, I've never grown this variety but it's from Baker Creek and it actually has purple leaves these initial leaves so that's really interesting so these are looking good I'll let them grow on a little more because the germination is really good and then I'm gonna clip one of them out the weakest one uh, I may give them another week. Some of these that are pretty far along, I may go ahead and clip those out and let the big ones start getting on with their lives so they can grow nice and strong before I put them outside. It's still been pretty cold in Ohio over the past week, but tomorrow it is supposed to be 72 and glorious. And you know what that means. I am gonna be spending all day outside. I'll start with perennial cleanup, which I'll bring you along with. I may prune my roses. Uh, which I'll also bring you along with uh, and just some general cleanup as much as I can get done. It's supposed to rain Saturday night and so Sunday it might be a little mushy outside so I want to get as much outside done that I can tomorrow. Sunday afternoon or evening I plan to do a ton of seed starting and so one of the reasons I'm a little behind is I ordered some more stuff from Bootstrap Farmer. Um, you know I use their products for seed starting and because I'm starting more annual flower seeds than I ever have before, I ordered these trays right here. And these are 50 count trays. And they just have bottoms right here. I've never ordered or never used these trays. Uh, I have used smaller Bootstrap Farmer little six packs, which were really hard to get plants out of. But these are a little more pliable, so I'm hoping I'll have good luck with these. But simply because of the number of annuals I intend to start, uh, like rudbeckias and stuff like that. I wanted something that I could plant in and not take up as much space under my lights that I have. I also ordered more uh, just the regular cups here and containers for those because the ones I had were a couple years old and so some had gotten lost or broken over this period of time and if I run out of seed starting containers I wanted some additional lying around so I could make sure I can get all my vegetables started without issue. I also picked up a new Vigo garden bed. Uh, if you're interested in getting a raised Vigo garden bed, I got my first one last winter and I have loved planting in them since this time. This is the kids uh, raised bed and so uh, if you've been watching my channel you know I grow some dwarf varieties of blackberries and raspberries in my earth boxes along the side of the house. I'm going to be transitioning them into this kids Vigo garden bed. It's relatively small, but I've got a trick. Uh, with the last Vigo garden bed that I added to my vegetable garden last year, I didn't have enough room to fully assemble it, and so I have two extra panels here. And so I'll be able to make this blackberry and raspberry bed the same size as the bed in my vegetable garden. And that's one reason I really like the Vigo garden beds. You can make them almost essentially as long as you want. You can buy the tension rods so the soil doesn't uh, push the sides of the bed out. And they have been really innovative over the past year and created a number of accessories for their beds that I haven't ordered yet 
but that I've been eyeballing, including trellises, arches, um, netting to protect from birds and frost. It's really incredible the amount of innovation they've done. So I'm still going to be using my Vigo garden beds and in the future when I decide to upgrade my entire vegetable garden I will probably replace those beds with Vigo garden beds in the coming years. I really like them because they're just a nice depth. Uh, 17 inches of soil space and if you don't want to fill all of that with soil you can of course use the Hugel culture method where you put wood and debris at the bottom and fill the top on, with soil and then that will help retain moisture and break down over time and this is certainly a much cheaper way to get started. So before we end this video I want to take you out to the garden right quick and show you a couple things that I'll be working on tomorrow. For those of you that were really excited about the Hookera project I was going to do here that I showed a picture of in a prior video, I'll stick that on the screen again. Uh, I am abandoning that project for now. Uh, I wasn't able to get my hands on the hookah varieties that I wanted this spring. It might be something I attempt in the fall, but what I really want to tackle early this spring and what I need to tackle first is the cottage garden uh, type perennial bed that I'm going to be doing on this side of the yard. And so I've ordered a ton of perennials. I told you I will be going over those in a video coming soon. I have ordered about all I think I'm going to get. There may be some more varieties here and there, so keep an eye on that video and like and subscribe to this video so you'll get notified about that. I have a ton of perennials coming in uh, at the end of April, and so I have got to, this month, get this bed prepared, edge expanded a little bit, so that I will have a place to put those perennials when they come in because I purchased a lot of them in plugs wholesale and so they don't need to stay in their containers very long. Some of them will be bare roots so it's going to be priority when those come in to at least get the bare roots in the ground at the end of April, early May and anything else I can um, limp along a little bit until I find somewhere else in the garden to put them. But I also need to get those in the ground just as soon as I can so they can prepare themselves for spring. I don't want to be putting tiny plants in the ground in late May, uh, June, right before it gets super hot in Ohio. And for those of you in the south, yes, it does get really hot in Ohio. It is equally as humid here, whether you believe me or not, small boy from Alabama it's equally as hot here, and so we don't want to deal with that. So basically the mix I'm going to be putting here, I'm going to order a rose later this month, hopefully when it becomes available from Great Garden Plants. It's a new variety that just came out this year by Proven Winners uh, that I'm really excited about. It is a somewhat um, climbing rose. It has beautiful petals. It's similar to the Oh So Easy Double Pink that I put back there last year, but it's a light lilac color, and I'm going to put it in the back of this bed to ramble along the fence and in front of that there's going to be alliums and all sorts of the annuals that I'm growing from seed as well as lots of other perennials I will go over in that next video. Some of the things I need to tackle in the coming weeks as I've mentioned before we are pulling up the landscaping fabric that I mistakenly put in the ground uh, between these landscape beds four years ago at this point. So I'm having a really bad issue with the space in summer because as you can see the mulch that I've put down here over the years has just broken down and we have a lot of weediness. So you can actually see the landscape fabric down here maybe at the bottom of this bed. I'm essentially just going to come through pull all the mulch I can off because this has turned pretty well into topsoil at this point and we are going to pull all the landscape fabric up even it out best I can and throw uh, micro clover seed on it and it'll pr provide a nice weed suppressant. Uh, also help soak up some of the water that this area tends to tr hold a little bit. And just the priority was suppressing the weeds. So I'm hoping the micro clover does a really good job. I have never seen it used in practice anywhere else. And so this is an experiment for me. And if you're interested in that, follow along for it. Um, it's not something that I might be overseeding my lawn with, especially this season. We are doing the lawn renovation uh, coming in the middle of April. And one thing I wanted to mention, if you intend to renovate your lawn this spring, you typically want to do it in the fall. I'm having such issues, I want to get it tackled 
this spring uh, it'll the grass will struggle a little bit going through summer because it's so new but um, I have a sprinkler system if you don't have a sprinkler system just be cognizant of how much water you might have to give that to limp it through summer but also make sure that if you have your lawn treated by a professional that you ask them not to put down the pre-emergent that may mean that you have more weeds this year than usual particularly crabgrass but uh, if you put down a pre-emergent, you're not going to be able to sow seed this spring. You'll waste any money that you throw down because the grass seed won't germinate. That's the purpose of a pre-emergent. So I ordered my grass seed from United Seed. I've never purchased from them, so it's not a recommendation. I just know they offer a lot of new, innovative varieties of seed, and I'm reseeding with turf-type tall fescue. Uh, this lawn is mostly completely bluegrass, but it was renovated a few years ago. So I've had some few weeds here and there come in or some few weedy grasses that I don't like. But we're not killing the grass down, we are just overseeding. Uh, if you want to completely renovate your lawn, I recommend the Lawn Care Nut on YouTube. That's how I got started around five years ago now and really invested in lawn before I got invested in the vegetable garden or the flower beds. Grass seed germinates typically at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, somewhere around 50 to 60 and you'll know when it's time to sow your grass seed in the spring because the forsythia will be blooming. So the forsythia is typically the time period that you want to put down your pre-emergent to stop crabgrass from germinating. And so if you see the forsythia, those beautiful yellow blooms in early spring, it's time to either one, put down your pre-emergent if you're not seeding anything, or two, overseed your lawn. It is not quite time here in southwest Ohio to be pruning hydrangeas. Uh, so I'll be doing that probably in the next coming weeks actually. Uh, I could probably do it right now and let me show you what we're waiting for. So I don't know if you can see right here very closely, but there are buds on these hydrangeas um, that should start coming up for this coming year. And those buds will begin to swell and they'll be green and you'll know that you should prune directly above a bud because that's where the new branches and leaves will come out from. And so you typically prune them by a third. I will be walking you through and doing a video for each hydrangea type uh, this coming spring. Last year I did a pruning video on pruning arborescence hydrangeas. You can find that on my channel. It was posted last March or April. But I will be doing another video this spring along with each other hydrangea type that we can do. Roses will be pruned this weekend uh, and I will be going over that. So I intend to be shooting videos nearly all day Saturday and Sunday to provide some content over the next couple weeks because after we get seed started this weekend it'll be another couple weeks before it's time to start more seeds. So thank you guys for joining me today. Stay tuned and look out for those videos coming next week. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care. Bye.